see if I can pull this off. Okay, I'm starting the first of the month of vintage tees vlog. God help me. <laughs> hey, welcome back. This is Nikki Terry Style. Today's video is a little bit different because we are going to be doing a complete month of vintage tea styling. If you know me, you know I'm obsessed with my graphic tea collection, especially when I can find vintage t-shirts. I am a bit of a collector. And I realized this on a recent thrift trip, I ended up thrifting four or five vintage graphic tees that I was so excited about. I literally couldn't leave any of them behind. I thought the tripo was telling myself, I have so many vintage tees, so many graphic tees, I could wear a different one every day for a week. And then I was like, no. Actually, I could wear a different one every day for a month and not repeat. And so that's where the idea came from. I decided to challenge myself to make sure that I was really wearing and styling all of my amazing t-shirts that forced me to think of novel ways to combine them in different types of looks and for different occasions. I had days where I wanted to be more dressed up, but I still had to incorporate a t-shirt into my look. So I am of course gonna share every day of the month with you with a little bit of styling, but before we get into that, I do wanna talk really briefly about how I identify vintage t-shirts when I'm thrifting. I'm certainly not the expert on this topic. There are many amazing blog posts and videos that you can check into. I'm gonna link a couple below for you if you're interested. But I wanted to give you an idea of like a couple of things that I look for that in general are pretty good indicators of if you've got a vintage tee. So first up, this is obvious, but a lot of times you'll get lucky and the date will be right on that baby. 1988, 1989, 1989, in really small print here, copyright 1974. But I did wanna tell you something to watch out for are the copyright dates. Sometimes they do not correspond to when the t-shirt was made, but to when the copyright was originally made. One of the best examples is Garfield merchandise. The original Jim Henson copyright is like 1978, so anything with Garfield on it, for the most part, will usually say 1978, even if it was produced newer. Probably the first thing I'll look at is the style of the t-shirt and just sort of determine if the style matches the era that I think it's from. These two shirts just look very 90s to me with this like wild neon, with the sunflower print, and then if we look closely, this one has a copyright from 1996. But of course the style of the tee is probably like the least consistent way to really date it because so many companies have come out with like retro or repro style t-shirts. Vintage means it's 20 years or older in actual age. Retro or repro means that it's something that was made to look in the style of a certain era. You'll see the two used interchangeably, but if you actually know what it means, it can help you if you're trying to like shop from resellers and things like that. Actual vintage pieces of course tend to be more valuable than retro pieces. When I first on this t-shirt I thought it looked like it was a vintage style just with like the font and the lettering and there's no date on it so one way you can tell with this type of t-shirt is to look at the construction the first thing I will look for is the stitching on the hem and the cuffs of the shirt vintage tees tend to have what's called single stitch construction which means there's only one row of stitching on the cuffs and or the hem of the tee I guess there was this period in the late 90s where they were switching over so you'll see some that have single stitching on the cuff but then double stitching on the hem so it could be from that era. Other vintage construction elements to look for are ringer tees where it's got the contrast ring on the cuffs and the collar of the shirt. But again, a lot of modern pieces can be made that way. And also look for this style of construction which is called a mounted collar. See how the collar actually pops up over the top of the rest of the t-shirt construction. So again, looking at the style, we've got a 70s style with this silk screen which is an older style of printing on t-shirts. See how it's got a sheen to it. It's dated 1974 and it's a single stitch construction, just a single line of stitching there and on the hem. Single stitch, silk screen, 70s style. 70s style, single stitch. This one has a dead stock tag on it, which you can see from Woolworths, which definitely is a good indicator that it's old. And we're gonna talk about tags here in a second. T-shirts like this can look like they're a 70s or 80s style. Obviously it's David Bowie from Ziggy Stardust days. And this one is even made with a single stitch construction. However, the next indicator we're gonna look at is the tag and you will get so much information from the tags. It's one of the first things that I actually look at when I'm going through vintage items. So first of all, this one has printing directly onto the T where the tag goes. That is definitely a more modern thing for manufacturers to do. And then this tag says Bowie in the old style, but if you look at the back of it, it clearly says 2017. So check for dates on the tag as well. Check for websites. That's definitely gonna be 2000s and on. 
And be especially careful with band t-shirts because a lot of the old designs can be reproduced in modern styles. Which again, it's fine to wear the repro. I'm just saying if you're looking for true vintage and if you're trying to determine how much something is worth. So again, going back to the tags on vintage tees, ones that are made in this like papery style material. If it says made in the USA, that's a big indicator usually. Some of these like really common manufacturers that you see everywhere like Hanes, you can look up on the internet and see if it's an old style of tag and that actually date it pretty accurately. And another thing to point out on old tags the sizing will often have not just a letter for large but it also has numbers next to it and that can be an indicator that something is older like the 70s so this tee is a good example if you look at it at a glance it definitely looks old it's an older style this was really popular in 90s y2k era the t-shirt is thrashed and obviously well loved but if you look at the construction it's double stitching on the hem and the cuff but the copyright is 1995 which again could be just related to the image not necessarily the date the shirt was made but if you look at the tag you can see that it's an older style of a delta tag and it has numbers next to the size which means that it's probably older I know for a fact that this one is older because this is my shirt from the 90s plot twist <laughs> the last thing is to be wear tags that say vintage on them that's like pretty much a dead indicator that it is not a vintage piece those are my starter tips for you I wanted to let you know like how I decide what I'm calling vintage and retro I'm just someone who likes to uh, learn as much as I can about it and there's a lot of uh, much more informed people out there but I thought I would share what I know and what I use as a tool when I'm thrifting for vintage teas. So I hope you found that interesting. Go ahead and leave comments if you want to discuss that topic further because I'm here for it. But now let's get into the styling portion and I'm going to show you a full month of styling my vintage t-shirt collection. So I told myself when I started this challenge that I was not going to just use jeans every day with the outfits. I wanted to like really challenge myself to style these looks and yet here we are on day one right out the gate. It feels like that part in Mean Girls when they're like, I guess you picked today. I guess I picked today. I was going for like a 70s inspiration with this Hawaii tee that I'm styling. So I've got my vintage Wranglers on, my high top Converse. I just need like a couple of accessories on this and I'm good to go. And I'm gonna be sitting at a desk working all day. So if I get a little bit chilly inside, then I'm gonna pull on this little satin bomber jacket. And this is day one. Day two, I'm styling this University of Oregon tee. My mom was a duck, so go ducks. I thought it'd be fun to bring out all the colors in this t-shirt. So obviously I'm playing up the green and yellow and then tons of gold jewelry with just lots of fun accessories for this look. And I love how it fits with that skirt. I actually wore this out to our Korean supermarket for some grocery shopping and ramen that day. I found this t-shirt recently at a thrift store for only like one or two dollars. It was such a good find. I wanted to style it with like kind of a monochrome black and white look, but obviously just a pop of color with my headband. And don't forget little touches like rolling up your sleeves can make a big difference and tucking it into your bottoms. And I wore this in a recent video where I went thrifting. Here's a styling trick I love, pulling a t-shirt on over a dress with a collar so the collar can peek out. And then you've got the bottom as your skirt portion, obviously. I don't know what this t-shirt is. I found it in the bins and it just has some great colors to play with. I love this red and brown combination in particular, so I really played that up. Now I'm styling this 90s kind of safari long sleeve tee and this is the first of a few of what I'm gonna call my off days because I'm not super dressed up, I'm not going anywhere. Days like that, I'll kind of accessorize with my cell phone case and just have that match even. So I played up some of the accessories but mostly I'm just kind of comfy, cozy, messy bun and just working from home. This tank top with the horse embroidered on it, I wanted to give it a little bit of a 90s styling with my choker and my Doc Martin boots. But one of my other favorite styling tricks is to throw on an oversized men's button down shirt. This one is like a faux suede material. I totally recommend thrifting something like that if you can find it because they are so comfy and cozy and a great kind of summer to fall transitional piece. I went thrifting at the bins that day, so I wanted to be really comfortable and casual, but also a little bit styled up. I never got to do my hair or makeup today because I've been in a little editing hole. What's considered classy if you're rich and trashy if you're poor? Ramen. 
That's right, it's the glamorous lifestyle of a YouTuber. Here's the behind the scenes of me just sitting and editing and eating at my desk. This is borderline embarrassing for me to share, but you know, you're gonna see me every day for a month, so you're gonna get some stuff like that too. What I did love about this styling was wearing the t-shirt underneath a jumpsuit. And if you have a pair of overalls, you could create the same effect styling your t-shirt underneath those pieces. One of the main reasons I'm always thrifting for skirts and pants with bold patterns on them is so that I can pair them with graphic tees like this. This day, I remember it was a lot of fun. I went to the movies with my fiance. We saw the new Suicide Squad movie. Um, I wanted to go with like a casual 70s, kind of sporty 70s look with this. And obviously playing up just the black and white again is a big thing for me. This jacket though is what really kind of makes it all come together, even though it's not totally showing off the t-shirt. But because I was like inside and outside, I kind of got to wear it both ways that day. Believe it or not, this look is actually inspired by a lot of looks I've seen on like Fashion Week street style. And it's got an oversized t-shirt with also like wide leg, loose, flowy pants. And it's not something I normally would go for because I usually need a bit more structure. But overall, I like how it came together. I think you either love or hate this look. So let me know what you think. I like this one. It's very different for me, but it was really fun to style. I went thrifting! So I got my thrifting bag. So yeah, this look popped up in another video because I filmed the National Thrift Store Day scavenger hunt video in this outfit, which this was a really comfortable thrifting outfit. I'm a little disheveled because it was a hot day and I wish I had filmed this before I went. But it was a great day. I'm styling just another work from home outfit, but this time pulling pattern on with this thrifted pattern jacket, which I gave me like kind of an artsy feel with that. So I thought it'd be fun to pull an interesting bag out with it and give it a little bit of an art house vibe. Oh, we're having thunderstorms today, so he's gotta stay close, I think. He's a little, he's scared. Poor little guy. Another way you've seen me style my tees on here is to do a bra tuck, and I love doing that when I've got a skirt that I don't want to tuck bulky fabric into the top band of the skirt. And I think the bra tuck is a nice solution for that. Tonight we're going to dinner. Like, I think it's a fairly nice place, so I kind of ran into like a challenge of how to style a vintage tee in like a little bit nicer, like a little bit more dressed up way. And I think there's a number of ways you could go and you could even do a graphic tee, but I had just styled this, a really similar look for a different video. And I decided to kind of run with this idea, just a plain white vintage tee with this dress over it. We're going to a winery and dinner. So this is like kind of a like cool winery look in my mind. I don't know, like it's a little bit witchy. It's like a good summer to fall transition for this time of year. And like, I think this feels like not too dressed up and like not quite too dressed down. I can't help it. This t-shirt just screams 80s Americana. Like coat classic, born to run on cassette, Tony Danzon, who's the boss. All it needed was double denim, sneakers, and lawn tickets to Springsteen. So it's Monday currently for me. I'm working from home today and I just kind of needed some like boss bitch energy. So I kind of went with like a little bit of like a suiting kind of styling and then just like some power like red pops of color. This is a bra tuck. This 88 Harley tee is one of my favorites in my collection. I got it earlier this year at a flea market and it gets a lot of wear, but this challenge is forcing me to find a new styling for it. So I went with some really kind of classic clean cut pieces in my closet and then the snakeskin boots to bring back some edge. 
So obviously I've been wearing a lot of my skirts and I went back into my closet to look at my dresses again because obviously you can pull the t-shirt on over. I'm gonna use a hairband to style this tee up and give me the proportions I want to use the dress as a skirt. This tea look is coming to you from inside a thrift store. I just took a trip down to Roanoke, Virginia and did some thrifting while I was there. So you saw this look pop up in a couple of videos and here I am capturing a thumbnail for one of them. And then the next couple looks are kind of hard for me to capture because I was not at home again and I didn't have proper lighting and everything like that. But here I am styling this nags head tee in a really casual uh, work outfit. We were working outside that day, so I got my boots on. And then this tee with these cheetah print prints was one of my favorite looks of the whole month. It was so cute and comfy. And then I just added those bright red earrings for a little extra pop of color. And yeah, I really liked this look. This was another Pinterest sort of New York Fashion Week inspired look with this oversized football tee. But then I went ahead and added my printed satin bomber over the top just to bring in some more fun patterns. So when I did that, I actually tied up the tee to give it better proportions. And I think that's a fun pattern mix there. One of the reasons I love just funky t-shirts so much is they can just be another interesting layer to a lot of different looks. Like I think this blouse is really the star of the show here, but it looks cool as like a jacket over a t-shirt in this case. Okay, today's outfit documentation is coming from the thrift store fitting room. <laughs> So I have this great Smoky Mountains t-shirt that I love and it's like oversized so I saw a cool Pinterest style with a, like an extra high waist mini skirt with an oversized tee tucked in so I wanted to do that style and then I paired it with my like grungy Converse just to make it all super casual and that's the whole look. This t-shirt has some like cringy, like old school toxic body imagery going on, but it did belong to my mother in the 80s and it's totally her sense of humor. So I have kept it and I decided to style it for an, a work from home look going with like all blue here. And I actually love this little fit. I think it's cute to add that pop of red lipstick with a simple t-shirt just to make it a little bit of a juxtaposition of the two styles. I don't know if leather cowgirl is like an actual aesthetic, but I enjoyed this outfit. I think this one actually came together pretty cute. Oh, Roger. Hi, you might be thinking this look is a little bit too on the nose, like costumey, and you're probably right, but I will say it's a good example of playing with textures. So don't be afraid to style your tees with leather, with velvet, with silk. Mixing a tee with those can just be unexpected and really cool. Look at you. You're so cute. Oh my God, look at you have your little ball right in front of you. At least my dog really likes it. <laughs> you see this? Like I mentioned, this t-shirt is pretty thrashed because I've owned it for a long time, but that doesn't necessarily deter me when it comes to vintage because, you know, you pay extra for that kind of thing at Urban Outfitters. It can make a piece look really lived in. So I do usually like to style this in a grunge way, but today I wanted to try pulling a blazer on over it, which is perfect for covering some of those flaws and imperfections. You may notice I do have several of these peace t-shirts. My aunt actually designed and printed these shirts in the 80s and I love them for so many reasons. But I am doing a little bit of the textile kind of mixing again with this satiny skirt and I love how this look came together. It's just a no makeup work from home day, but it's comfy. I feel really cute and light and peaceful. I love pairing a long sleeve tee with shorts. Something about those proportions I think really works for me. This is just kind of like a running to the grocery store kind of look. It looks a little bit sporty and like reminds me of like a cheerleader type of look with the sneakers and everything. But I do think it came out really cute and there's some fun color play there too. 
and kind of some more color play with this outfit as well. I really wanted to play up the neon in this t-shirt with my chartreuse pants, but I also didn't want it to look too on the nose 90s or too trendy. So I felt like kind of grounding it with my black leather jacket and boots was the way to go. But then a fun pattern bag kind of like pulls it all together. Today I'm filming the fall fashion video and I'm nervous because this outfit is very experimental. <laughs> but here's my tea, this vintage yellow tea and I did my iron on letters myself. I have it over a little blouse so I can have a little pussy bow moment. And then basically it's like primary colors mixed with the brown. Weeks later, my thoughts are that I still love this look. Let me know what you think of it and all of the looks in this video because this is the final look of our month of vintage tea styling. Thank you all so much for sharing this massive style challenge with me. What I learned is that it was a combination of feeling like I had some sort of like anchor to my styling for an entire month. So it made it easier to get dressed on some level. And on the other hand, I really started to burn out on t-shirts by the end of the month. And I hope you can't tell that because I really tried to keep up with the styling and keep it on point and come up with new ideas. But being limited that way, it made me really miss some of my other clothing. <laughs> In order to keep my ideas fresh, I was combing through Pinterest and saving new looks that I thought I could try out with my own pieces. So I've actually created a whole Pinterest board dedicated to t-shirt styling. I would love for you guys to check it out if you're on Pinterest. I will link that below for you and get you some more t-shirt styling inspo. I would love to know from you guys if you would ever try a style challenge like this and challenge yourself to wear the same type of item and style it in new ways for an entire month. I would suggest maybe do two weeks because after that you're gonna start to burn out. But anyway, we'll chat in the comments today and then I will be back and see you again here soon for a new video. I've never committed to doing something like this on this scale, so. I can only do like 30 second clips. Oh, it's this light. Oh God, my tripod is broken. <laughs> so we have to make do is practically like duct taped on there right now <laughs> and I'm just gonna have to like order a new one today. Also my light's going out so it's flickering all crazy. Living my best. <laughs> and this one even has a single stitch on the hems and the cuff. The cuff and the hem. <laughs> and this one is... <clears throat> this probably looks stupid. <laughs> it's like an 80s movie outfit. <laughs> hold your denim jacket over your shoulder like no one has literally ever done in real life. <laughs> like, uh, All right, let's roll this. You don't know what you got till it's gone. It's because my shit's in the way. I don't know why I don't just like move it, but <laughs> it's me a long laugh. <laughs>